everyone. Welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. It is about 1.18 in the morning. I know. I'm loca, loca, loca. Well, when you can't sleep and you need to do something, because just sitting around watching the news or being on your phone is not enough. You have to actually take some action physically. Well, you do what you do best. And for me, I do best in the kitchen. Okay, so I am bringing to you a Puerto Rican dish. And it's called sopa de pollo con fideo. And that is chicken soup with the uh, thin, uh, like the thin Lipton noodles. Yeah. This is homemade, and it's a Puerto Rican-style dish. Okay, so this is these are part of the ingredients. There's still a whole lot more. <laughs> ah, there's still a whole lot more. Let me get this out. We're going to need that. We're going to need some olives. And, of course, sofrito. Okay, we're going to need onions, these are green olives, pimento, okay, pimento stuffed olives. We're going to need some onions, chopped onions, and green peppers, not too much, just about maybe a, a quarter of a cup. I've got some potatoes and some sliced carrots here and those are three whole potatoes and some sliced carrots i got three ears of corn which i'm going to chop up and i'll show you how i chop them up these are the thin spaghettis i i just broke it up into little one inch pieces and you're going to need this kind of seasoning it's uh maggie and it's pollo con fideo all right Sopa sabor, savory soup. And it's a chicken flavored uh, noodle soup mix. Okay. So because I'm making a lot, I'm using two. Usually I only use one. But I'm making this for Huffster's work. Um, he brought in uh, he brought in for, some for lunch last week. And one of the his co-workers commented on it. You know, on the soup. And so I thought, well, let's give them a taste. You know, that's what it's all about. Okay. So I've got two handfuls. I'm going to say about half a cup of a uh, chopped mix of onions and peppers, red and green. All right. So we're going to put that there. I also got a eight ounce can of tomato sauce. You know, I've got my sofrito. I'll let you know how much I'm going to put in. I don't have any achote oil made, and I'm not going to make any right now. So we'll do without that. We'll just use some regular olive oil, E-V-O-O, -O, extra virgin. All right. And then, of course, we'll do our spices. Have my spice rack, and I'll I'll name it. I'll call it out as I put them in there. Now to this, if you wanted to make it hot, you could like adding some green chilies or something, or habanero or, or whatever hot pepper you like, um, or you can just do um, some spicy mojo. You know, just sprinkle some on that or whatever kind of hot sauce you like. You know, in your soup. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get on with the process. Now, let me show you something about the chicken, okay? I'm going to push you back here. Because it's for Huffster's work, I'm using, geez, what is it, four, eight, and this has a whole bunch of them, uh, 10, 12, I don't know, maybe about 15 pieces of chicken. You don't put them in whole, okay? And so what you want to do is you want to chop them into bite-sized pieces, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, I will tell you this. I don't like my chicken in my soup 
to be pale looking like you have a colorful soup you know all these colorful vegetables and stuff and then you know you see floating around there something pale and white it's not very appealing it's not inviting to the eyes or i mean probably to the palate but not for the eyes and for me i like it has to be both so what i like to do is sear the chicken with some color um like sasong with the oil and that's usually why I thought that works because I thought this is seasoned oil. It's a natto seasoned oil and it seasons and it dyes the chicken, gives it color. So because I don't have any made, I'm going to use some sasong and EVO and do it that way. Or some turmeric will work too. Either way, they're getting seared and getting some color on them uh, before I throw them in the pot. So the first thing we want to do is cut our chicken and put it to season. Okay, so we're going to open this and throw them in here. There's a little bit of water in there. And then I'm going to put my gloves on, which I have right here. And we'll start working with the chicken. And I'll show you how I... Cut it up. And you could do chicken legs. You could do whatever kind of chicken pieces uh, you want to do. But you definitely want to do bone in. Okay. I guess you can do um, a tenderloin. I don't know. It may dry up on you. I don't know. I've never done. I've always done the bone in because it's moist chicken. And I always do legs and thighs. That's the more moist meat on the bird. All right, so I'm going to show you how I cut up my chicken. Then I'm going to season it. I'll be, I'll go away, finish cutting them all, and then I'll come back. I'll show you how I season it. Okay, that way you don't get bored watching me cut up 15 pieces of chicken. <laughs> I do need some kind of a, a bowl. To put the scraps in for um, boots. Yep, yep, yep. What am I going to use? So, yeah, I like this. I'll use one of these. Yeah, because boots gets raw meat. So I'm going to. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. See? See this end of the chicken right here? I don't I don't incorporate that in the soup. I cut that off and then I just use this part, the meat part. Okay, no sense in putting just the bone in. <laughs> All right, and then on the wings, I'm gonna show you how I cut this. And you can cut off this fat with the scissors on the chicken. Okay. Okay. Boots gets that too. Okay. So let me show you how I cut this. Okay. I use a meat tenderizer and okay. let me slice it. These are the size pieces you want, just like that. I'm putting them back in there. Now this has a bone in it, so. Okay. Just like that. Okay. okay. Now, for the leg, let me show you how I do that. Okay, tell you I don't like that part. Oh, I don't include that part. Just throw that out. Okay. And then we're going to say that's one piece. Let 
to slice first. Okay, slice down to the bone. And there you have it. See? Bite side pieces. Well, finger size pieces. And that's how I do the thighs and that's how I do the legs. So I'm going to chop all these up. Okay, all these pieces up, and then I'll be back and I'll show you how I season them. All right, so I'll bring you back. Okay, we got our chicken all chopped up and in some water. I'm going to rinse this out. I've already rinsed out the chicken. I just had it in more water. Let me get as much as, as, much as that off of here as I can. All right, that's my hands. Gonna put Boots's chicken in the fridge, and I'm gonna put a double. The only thing I'm gonna use to season this is going to be goja adobo. That's it. That's all I'm using. Okay. So you got a nice amount on there. Okay, to taste. I think I'll put some black pepper too. Black peppercorn. Okay. I mean, you can make the pieces even smaller than that if you wanted to. If you had a lot more people. I don't know how many uh, Huffster is in Huffster's clan or at work. But uh, he knows. So I guess uh, I showed up the amount of chicken I was doing and he thought it was enough. So I'm going to go by, by that. All right, so we have our chicken already seasoned. The next thing we're going to do is sear them, okay? So let's move you over here so you can see what I'm doing, okay? And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put a pot, the soup pot, on with about three, two-thirds full of water. I'll put that to boil. No salt or anything, just the plain water, because the soup mixes is going to have enough salt plus you have the adobo and the sazon on the chicken so that should be plenty so we're going to put this on and put on the potatoes because they take a bit longer to cook than the carrots so we'll just put the potatoes on and let that start boiling and about that much water, two thirds of the way. I'll put that on high, so let it start boiling. And we're going to take out the potatoes only and put them in. Okay, we're putting them in the pot. See if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Just the potatoes, not the carrots. Okay, and then after you put the potatoes in, go ahead and drain out this water, rinse the carrots real well, and then put fill it back up with water. That way the, the carrots will be in fresh water. 
this potato seems to have a bad spot of taking it out. All right, almost done here. Boy, that's a lot of potatoes. There's only three, three regular sized potatoes. They weren't too large or anything. They were just regular sized. A little bit bigger than medium, but they weren't too large. But it yields a lot. That's good. All right, so I've got all my potatoes out of there. I'm going to rinse this out. And I'll throw these carrots in when I throw the corn in. Alright, let me give these a little rinse. And in a little bit of water. There we go. Okay. So, here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to get a couple of packs of sasson. Sasson con culantro. Okay, a couple of packs of these. We're going to put olive oil, not too much, just coat in the pan. Okay, and I'm going to turn on some heat, put it to about a six, we open our packets, it's both of them, okay, and we're going to empty them out into the pan, because this is going to give our chicken some color. Okay, I did want some black peppercorn in here. Okay, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> That's enough. All right. Okay, let me move some of this stuff over here, and that way we can start frying up our chicken. Okay. Make it. some flavor in it. That's why I say you don't need a whole lot of adobo in the chicken. I'm going to put this high so I heat up faster. Get my screen, my splatter screen. Okay, got that ready. Start them. Watch that sasson that will stain. So watch where you put your utensils. You know, if you have a stainable counter or whatever. All right, then we're gonna start putting in our chicken. Lining it up all around the pan. Just like that. I'm gonna make 
make sure I get them all in. Ice and snow. chicken in there. Okay? And I'm going to leave that to a number eight and let that sear. And we'll be back when that is ready to go into the water. Okay, I figured while the chicken is searing that I go ahead and show you I've already washed these how I do my corn. Okay? And just my hands are washed and clean. Okay. So right down the center. Get them over. And then one, two. I'll give you three pieces. One. Two, three pieces. Okay, and that's how you do all three of them. And do one more. Go right down the center. Try to line it up from the rows of corn. That way you get an even break. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Oops. And this one like this. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn my chicken around. And they should be ready to turn around. i turn over to the other side. And I want you to notice the color that they will have. All right, and that is the corn. Okay. Okay. Let's go over here. See if I can make it a bit closer. Talking about. So I'm gonna turn all these over. Look at that. Beautiful. Turn them over and sear them, and then after you sear them on both sides, drop them in the pot of water. By then the pot should be boiling, it's almost there. And that's, that's it for that. And then we'll let it cook for a little bit, and then we'll add the rest of our ingredients. This soup is really easy, it's a little bit of prep work. Uh, involved that, yeah, but it's fairly simple and so delicious. All right, I'll bring you back. Okay, this looks seared enough for me, so I'm going to drop them into the um, pot of boiling water they have over here with the potatoes in it. I am not putting the grease in there because it will release more 
of its own fat as it's boiling and if it continues to cook all the way. See how pretty that is. Yep. I lower this heat to a low. Yeah, five or six pieces of chicken, three meals each. So that's uh, six meals, six dishes. So that's, that's pretty good uh, yielding of money, if you ask me. Economical dish. Alright, so I'm going to take that off the heat so it can stop splattering. And I'm going to let that chicken cook in that water. And then I'll remove all the oil that I see on top before I put anything else in. Okay, so now we're going to get our roux going. And as you can see, I've emptied out the oil. From the pan, from the saucepan, I'm going to put in some masala wine to help get some of that roux off the bottom. And a little bit of mojo that has the jalapeno pepper inside, as you can see it. Put a little bit of that. Oh, about a big uh, serving spoon of sour. Take some of these garlic I have in this bag. I'm going to mash it up and get my little mortar and pestle. Okay, got about five pieces, five cloves in there. That should be more than enough. Glue off the bottom. Deglaze the pan, as it's called. Get all that good flavor that's on the bottom of it. And bring it back up to mix in with the rest of the decent flavors we're getting ready to put in. Alright. Sofrito. Freshly made today. One. Two. Okay, tablespoons. Two heaping tablespoons. And while that's sautéing, I'm going to mash this up. Okay. Nice and mashed. Can we put this in there? Okay. We got a garlic in there. There it is. All right, that's done. Now I'm going to put in our veggies, onions, and peppers. Okay. Oh my goodness, it smells oh, incredible in here. I'll tell you, that's so frito. Mm. And I sell those too. 12 ounces of freshly made, and I keep it frozen. Vacuum sealed bags. Keep them frozen to ready to use. So 12 ounces for $10. I also have the ice trays. Six cubes for seven, and then plus shipping, which they're in light, uh, really pretty light containers. If you do the uh, bags, the vacuum seal bags, 
So shipping is not that expensive. I would say about three to three to four dollars. Maybe under three. Depends on just how many you get. Always best to buy in bulk because once you start cooking with sofrito, and you can't go back. Okay, you just cannot. All right, so now we're going to add the olives, green olives. And I am going to add some medium green chili. If this would focus, you'd be able to see it. Chopped green chilies. I thought it was medium. I don't know, it might be very hot. <laughs> we'll find out. So we're going to add all that in there. Because I did put the mojo in there. <laughs> and the mojo had the jalapeno in there. Alright. Next we're going to put in our sauce. Eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Okay, so I put my green chilies and my tomato sauce. My phone kind of froze on me. Glad I caught it. Now, in all of my sauces, because of the acidity, I always add an eighth of a cup of brown sugar. Oh, syrup or ketchup or honey, whatever you have, that's sweet. Just not a lot, just enough to kill the acidity level. Here it is, one eighth of a cup of brown sugar. Okay, put this back. Okay. All that's left is my seasonings. So, definitely turmeric, teaspoon. This is all going to be a teaspoon, all of it. I don't put any salt, a little bit of cumin, teaspoon. Don't, if you don't like it, don't put it. Onion and garlic powder mix, teaspoon. Cilantro, teaspoon. Basil, teaspoon. Oregano, teaspoon. Parsley, Teaspoon. Salt, none. Okay? And that's my seasonings. Now I already put, now you can put um, smoked paprika in there. I think I will do that. A little bit of smoked paprika. See? Smoked paprika. Put some of this in there. Also a teaspoon. Okay. Some sugar. And stir that in. Let that cook really well. And I'll let it simmer for a little bit. Let it come together. And I'll bring you back. I'm gonna skim the fat off the water over there by the, with the chicken. And I'll bring you back. Okay, I got some light on. <laughs> Why are you cooking in the dark? I'm like that though. I like the dark. It doesn't bother me one bit. But I guess it would if I didn't know my way around this kitchen. Huh? <laughs> Alright, so we got this nice and cooked. Okay, see that? Look at that. Richness. Mmm. Oh, it smells so good. We're going to put this Let's go ahead and move that over here. Why don't we? And turn this one off. Okay, now. Okay. I'll put 
put this in here. Now this is going into the electric, uh, I guess, crock pot, the wide one, which is what he's going to take it in and plug it in over there so it stays warm. Okay. see get the rest of the stuff off of this pan it's just all goodness honey you don't want to miss out on none of that that's all your flavor oh yeah okay now I got most of the fat off the top. I skimmed that. Alright. Alright, the potatoes. Now we're going to add everything else. So we're going to add the corn. That's the corn. Yeah, it gets pretty full. But like I said, this is going in a in that crock pot right over there. I had the screen over here because I didn't want it to. When I had the, this pot over there, I didn't want it to splatter all over the crock pot and make a mess in the front. So we got this in here. Look at this already. Uh-huh. It ain't over yet. Mm -mm. So we're going to add. I'm going to add one of these, then taste it. And then I'll, I'll determine whether I need the other one. So that's the richness of it. And the reason why I choose Maggie is because it has Puerto Rican flavor. As opposed to the Lipton. Oh, excuse me. Okay. All right. We're going to taste a little bit of this in just a second. Now we're going to taste it now before I put in the thin spaghetti. Taste it for flavor. It's hot. Have to blow on it. I think it can use the other one. So, two packets it is. See, because I didn't use any salt. Don't need any. This has enough flavors that carry sodium in it. Okay. And then the last ingredient last but not least and this is if you want this addition I always love it okay let me taste it now perfect that is perfect all right last ingredient here we go. That's it. And that's about, I would say about half a cup of thin 
spaghetti noodles just broken up in about uh, to about size of an inch or so more or less to your liking you can also use the Amish noodles those little wide noodles those are good too in here I use uh, the little baby bow ties I use those oh yeah any kind of the just as long as it's not big and fat unless you want that you want a chunky soup then you can do that I need one more taste this is really good. It's addictive. I'm telling you, this is addictive, this soup. Oh, heaven. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Make you want to smack somebody. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let that cook, and I'll bring you back when it's done. All right, well, the soup is ready. And let me look at that. Oh, look at all that goodness in here. It's just such a delicious, hearty soup. So good. Oh, yeah. I put a half a can of diced tomatoes in there. You can see tomatoes because it needed some color. I felt it did. And with the nice green olives, see that? I mean, that's like, doesn't do it much justice, does it? See that? Pretty color. But anyway, let's taste. Everything is done. Green spoon. Ah, oh, perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, this is going to Hubster's. What well, helps to work tomorrow? So I'm just going to take a little bit out for me. Then I'll have some for lunch. A little bowl. And this was the chicken fat that's, that skimmed off the top. I'm going to save that. I'm going to, because I can make some good gravy with that. Sorry, Boots. Let me get myself a, a little bowl and get me a piece of chicken, a corn. I have a potato, yep. I have a corn. I want some carrots. And an olive. And some noodles. Alright. That'll be my little lunch for tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and cap that. All right, well, that's it. That's all she wrote. So, until the next one, you all. Let's take a picture. I'll probably take a different picture. You all take care of yourselves and one another. God bless you. Give me a thumbs up if you've liked this video. Make it. I'm telling you, you're going to love this soup. Okay? Subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. And turn on that notification bell. Ding, ding. That way uh, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new recipe. Until the next one, you all, God bless you. Take care of yourselves and one another. Bye.